It's estimated that 1.4 trillion photos have been taken in 2020. From tiny cameras on the back of smartphones to DSLRs, cameras are all around us. But how do they work? To understand how a camera takes a photo, let's first understand what a photo is. A photo is a snapshot of time where the infinite amount of light sources that bounce off objects and enter the camera are recorded. If we were to magnify one single light ray coming from the studio light, we would see it hit the object and then scatter in every direction. We will refer to this single point as a point source. The point source gives off so many light rays that it's more realistic to think of the scattered light taking the shape of a cone. Keep in mind that although light is scattered everywhere, we will only be focusing on the light that enters the camera. Let's now look at three fundamental components within the camera that aid in converting these light rays into a photo. These are the aperture, the shutter, and the sensor. Let's first look at the aperture which is found inside the lens. The lens has discs called lenses that refract the light rays entering the camera to focus them into a focal point. The aperture in a DSLR is a spiraled assembly of tiny leaves that open and close together. The amount that the apertures open is referred to as stops. If the aperture is nearly closed, this is a high f-stop. If the aperture is open, this is a low f-stop. The aperture has two functions in a lens. Its first function is to limit the overall amount of light that can pass through the lens into the camera to lighten or darken a photo. Secondly, it's used to reduce the depth of field. The depth of field is the width of the plane that is in focus in your shot. For example, if we adjust the aperture to 1.4, only the wine opener is in focus and the bottle and corks are blurry. Let's look at a demonstration of why this is. For this demonstration, we will have the sensor which reads the light that hits it, the aperture, the lens which bends light rays into a focal point, and our subject. First starting with the bottle opener. The light rays emerge from the single point and hit the lens where they are refracted into a focal point that you can see here. The position of the focal point is dependent on the distance between the object and the lens. Remember, an object in perfect focus in a photo is defined by its many point sources refracted into a single point when it hits the sensor. The larger the cone of light is on the sensor, the less the object will be in focus. Let's study a point source from the wine bottle that is not in focus to see why. Notice, our object is now further from the sensor, so our focal point will be as well. As the light rays propagate past their focal point, they diverge and grow out of focus. The sensor will read a point source from this distance as a large magnified blur. The larger the cone of light is on the sensor, the more out of focus it will be. Similarly, any point source from the cork will not converge on the sensor. The cork's light rays will be read by the sensor even before they converge into their focal point, which would be behind the sensor. Every point source on the cork is therefore out of focus. Let's close the aperture to f22 and see how this affects our photo. Everything is now in focus, but why? Let's take our same three point sources and see why. As our first point source emerges from the opener and passes the lens, it again begins to converge into its focal point. The aperture, being very narrow, cuts off a lot of its rays, but the point source still converges into its focal point which is still on our sensor. Let's now take a point source from the bottle that was not in focus with the wide open aperture. Again, the light emerges from the point source and hits the aperture. The aperture blocks most of the light except for the very center. Although these rays will once again converge into a focal point before the sensor, look how gradual these rays are propagating. As the rays pass the focal point and hit the sensor, they are acceptably in focus. The same is true for the cork, as the aperture blocks most of the rays Although they are once again red before they converge into the focal point, they are concentrated enough to be considered in focus. This therefore expands our depth of field. Let's put the lens back together and follow the path of light into the camera. After the lens, we have the mirror box and a few other key components. 
This is the heart of a DSLR. The mirror box contains the mirror and the shutter. Behind the mirror box, we have the image sensor and the pentaprism sits on top. When light enters the mirror box, it's reflected off the main mirror and into the pentaprism. This is the sole purpose of the mirror. When the light enters the pentaprism, it is reflected into the viewfinder, thus allowing the photographer to view down the lens to align the camera for a photo. If we begin the sequence of taking a photo, the mirror flips up and no longer reflects the light rays. The light rays then hit the shutter box. The shutter box is made up of two curtains, each made up of multiple leaves. When a photo is being taken, the lower curtain drops, letting light through to the sensor. Once the sensor has been exposed for the desired time, the top curtain closes over the sensor, blocking out light once again. The duration that the sensor is exposed to light is referred to as the shutter speed. The shutter speed can range from multiple seconds by just staying open like this, to a thousandth of a second by working together like this. Notice the use of two curtains allows every part of the sensor to be exposed to light for the same amount of time. Here is a demonstration of the mirror and the shutter working together to take a photo. The mirror flips out of the way, the shutter opens, and then closes. Now that our sensor has been exposed to light, let's take a closer look to understand how it captures the light to later be turned into a photo. The sensor is made up of millions of pixels. A 16 megapixel camera has 16 million pixels, for example. Each individual pixel is so small that if the entire sensor was the size of a football field, a single pixel would be the size of a penny. Let's look at a small single portion of the sensor up close to understand how it works. The sensor is made up of three main layers, the micro lens, the color filter, and the photodiode. If we look at one single pixel, we can see how the three layers work. The basic concept within one single pixel is this. As the light rays or photons, the little colored balls, from the object reach the pixel, the micro lens focuses them to a narrow path. Then, depending on the pixel's filter color, all photons that are not the filter color will be absorbed. You can see how this pixel, being red, only allows the red photons through onto the photodiode. The red photons for this pixel then hit the photodiode, which converts the photons into electricity and stores the charge of electrons. The more photons that hit the diode, the greater the electric charge will be. Each pixel also has an amplifier which takes the build-up charge and increases it. This amplification process is referred to as the ISO. The camera's processor will later read the charge to create the strength of that single pixel. Now that all the pixels have a charge to them, the camera begins to read the sensor row by row, sending the charges down the sensor and out to the CPU for processing. That's the basic mechanics behind a DSLR. If you enjoyed this animation, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.